Hello! I decided to make this extra video because a lot of students struggle to integrate Bitbucket with IntelliJ. And so uh, I'm going to walk you through it a, a, in a little bit easier fashion because in prior videos we've had a, a local repository and stuff like that. There's still a local repository, but you don't really even know about it. So the first thing, uh, so you can see that I am actually on my Bitbucket right now. And I'm going to create a repository. And I'm going to call, I'm going to select a project, which is my project. You'll have your own, your own workstation, your own project. I'm going to just say my um, CIT 360. Now, I'm going to do this in such a way that I'm going to create a one repository that I'm going to I would use throughout the entire class. So I'll show you a little bit about how to reorg how to organize it. I'm going to make the uncheck this so that my repository is public, and I'm going to click create. And so it's just created essentially a black a, a blank, and we're going to need if you come over here to this button that says clone. We're going to need the information here in a couple of minutes. Okay, so right now all I have is a Bitbucket project. I don't have anything else. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to IntelliJ and I'm going to create a new project from the welcome window. And it's a Java project and no command line jazz. And I'm going to um, create a new repository or a new folder, CIT360. If I can type right here and click finish and it's going to create it. And you notice this is a Java project now. Now I'm going to, here in a few minutes, I'm going to do a few things, but before we get there, we need to first come up here to the top where it says VSC and enable version control integration and click get and now it's integrated. Now what that did was is that created that created a local um, repository actually under where I am storing my CIT360 but you don't really have to worry about that too much. There, there is a couple of steps though that you have to do um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a commit. Let's call this initial commit. Um, and let's see, maybe I need to, before I do that, I'm going to right click here. Let's see, I got it here. It's a little weird. So if I right click on this and I come down to Git, I can add. So I'm going to add this and then I'm going to go back, do my initial commit. Now it will let me do it. It says here now, do you want to always add? I always say always add. And then I'm going to push. And right here is where I'm going to need that uh, URL from Bitbucket. So I'm going to flip back over there and I just need this part of it. I don't need the git clone in this case. So I'm going to copy that, swing back here and plunk that thing in. Now I'm going to push. Now down here at the bottom you just saw that the push has been rejected. Oh man, what was that all about? Well, it's just kind of the way that this um, local repository works. So that's okay, don't, don't, don't worry. What we need to do is we now need to take what we have. We basically need to connect what we have in Bitbucket up with our Git repository. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a pull. That's going to pull what we have on the Bitbucket side over to what we have on our side. Now notice it says, hey, there's no branch here. Well, there's a master branch and it doesn't think it knows it. So if you look, drop down right here, it says press. Um, in, in my case, it's um, you know, like control R. So I hit control R and master shows up. So I want that's the master, that's the main branch. 
And then right under here where it says Modify Options, select Rebase. Now, uh, what this is going to do is it's just going to set everything up the way it needs to be. So it's going to think a little bit here. Add this Git um, file right here. wasn't here in my repository, but was on Bitbucket. Now it's over here. And now I can do a push. And it will be successful. Pushed one commit to Origin Master. So I'm going to flip back over to Bitbucket. And sometimes you have to like click on one thing and back. Now I can see that I've got something. Now it isn't showing this source file yet because there's nothing in it or folder. So I always store everything that I do in a set of packages. So for me, I would do something like edu.byui.cit360. And then I'm going to call this one week one. And under here, I'm going to right click again and create a Java class. And I'm going to call this Java class collections. And then it's going to say, hey, do you want to add? And I'll add it. And then, of course, I'm going to put some stuff in there. But before that, I'm going to um, come back up here to get, and I'm going to do a commit. Go away. Go away. <laughs> there we go. And let's call this um, commit collections. And then I'm going to click the commit down here. And then I always have to do a commit and then a push. The commit kind of like packages everything up. And then the push sends it across back to Bitbucket. Now that push is successful. So now if I come back over here, I've got a source folder that has collections in it. And if I click on it, it has the class in it. Now from now on, everything is connected. So anytime that I make changes here, I highlight the, uh, when you create a file, it should automatically add it. Um, if it doesn't add it, you can highlight the project, come down here to get and go up here to add, and it will add anything that's new. And then uh, otherwise get commit and then get push with those things you should be organized and then i would suggest that <coughs> you just create new packages like this let's see we'll call this one um um, data val and exceptions add it in we're going to commit we're going to commit data val and exceptions okay commit and then push And by the way, you can actually, when you go to commit here, I know nothing to commit. When you go to commit, down when you click a click button, you can also select click and uh, commit and push. All it does is go to push right after commit. But if we come back, go to source again, now I've got weeks one and two. And now you start to have a folder that's organized and you can put multiple um, files inside these folders. You can put folders inside of folders if you want to subdivide it. A package is a way for Java to organize files in a kind of a folder structure, even when because it's multi-platform, 
you know, a folder in Windows is a little bit different than a folder in Linux, for instance, or a folder in other types of, of um, platforms. So I hope that um, going through this will help you to be able to set up your projects a little bit easier.